All right, so let's um, let's go ahead and get started, and hopefully we'll get audio. If not, that's not imperative. Um, so we're doing a talk. Originally, this came to our attention because there's still some issues with people getting vascular access, uh, not just amongst some of our colleagues on the inpatient side, but also in our own department. So uh, this kind of got sprung on me a little bit late, so it's not the full deal that I wanted to do for you guys. My plan is to actually have a lab to go over some of these things uh, a little bit later on, but I couldn't put that together uh, in this amount of time. So uh, what we're going to do today is talk about some of the, um, some of the reasons that even experienced providers uh, still fail with ultrasound guided vascular access. And um, ultimately the goal is to get you guys to be as successful as humanly possible. All right, um, amongst even the most difficult patients. Now, hopefully, I'm going to have you guys walking out here today, being able to anticipate and avoid some of those challenges uh, with that difficult patient, and obviously have you guys teaching the proper technique, teaching some of the uh, pearls and, and helping other people around the hospital and some of our students avoiding some of those pit, pitfalls. Um, so why? why? Why are we doing this? Well, first off, you know the technique, right? So why, why are we even talking about it? But this is a talk beyond short axis versus long axis, okay? You guys have a bunch of experience, but our job is humbling, all right? And just when you think you got it, you're going to come across a situation that's going to remind you that maybe you don't have it. And that holds true with ultrasound guided vascular access as well. We can always get better. We always strive to be better, to be the best we can be. And obviously, there's evidence that you can get better, too, or I wouldn't have even been approached about this, all right? I've seen some common mistakes that continue to happen, so, um, so I think there is room for improvement. Also, too, you guys are influential residents, all right? You guys get approached around the hospital for procedural consultation, or if you're in the unit, or difficult vascular access situation, a lot of times it's you guys that get, get turned to, so you guys need to be the best you're, ex you're expected to be the best. So that's why I think there is room for this lecture. So these are personal experiences for me, things that made me better at vascular access, and also errors that I've seen each and every one of you guys make, walking into the room, seeing you guys do some of these same mistakes. All right, so it's not, I know I've had talks with multiple people about ultrasound guided vascular access. But you may be sitting there thinking, oh, yeah, that's my error, that's my error. Everybody does these things, so that's why we want to talk about it. We're going to start off with poor positioning. <laughs> All right. Now, poor positioning, that could be yourself poorly positioned, could be the machine poorly positioned, could be the patient poorly positioned. So the first thing is to get yourself and the patient, when possible, it's not always possible, comfortable. All right, get the patient and yourself comfortable if you can. All right, adjust the bed height. All right, I walk in all the time and see people like this, trying to put in an IV. Your back's getting tight. It's a difficult patient. You're eventually going to give up, walk out, say, I can't get it. All right, reluctantly, you'll spend an hour to try and first, um, but you will um, eventually give up because, you know, you got to keep moving, right? Sometimes we just can't get it. Position the machine directly in front of you. This is another common mistake. Walk in and you see somebody trying to put an IV in like this. Okay, they're looking over their shoulder. You need to have the machine positioned directly in front of you. All right, and it needs to be positioned in a manner that goes with what side you're trying to work on the patient. So let's pretend that we've got a patient lying this way. All right, their head is facing you, their feet are facing the board. All right, usually you guys walk in, because this is what we do with most, most ultrasound machines. We walk in, we put the, put the machine on the patient's right side, right, because we scan with our right hand generally. The problem with that is if you are a right-handed person, right, you're usually driving the needle with your dominant hand, right, which is right-handed, right, for most people. So what you're doing is you're doing kind of this almost like crossover, Okay, where your your hand is, is is getting over, your left hand is getting over your right hand, and it's kind of an awkward way of doing it. 
the better way to do it, I think, if you're putting an IV on the right arm, right upper extremity, this doesn't apply to the left. This works fine on the left, right? Because now we've got everything positioned, machine right in front of me. My arms are not like this. They're like this, okay? If you're putting one in on the right side, flip the machine around and have the patient, so pretend I'm the patient, have their arm lying out like this. So you sit cephalad to their, to their arm and have the machine position caudal to their arm. All right, so now you've made a situation where again you have this nice, I'm raising my hand so it looks kind of awkward, but you have this, this situation where everything is nice and fluid. Your arms aren't crossed trying to put in the IV. So just flip the ultrasound machine around facing the patient's head when you're doing a right-sided IV, assuming you're a right-handed person, it would be opposite if you're a left-handed person. So try that out, and I think that's going to that's gonna help you a lot ergonomically and improve your success. Um, also keep the extremity straight. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about why you want to do that in a second, but a lot of times we'll position the bed height up, we'll get the machine set right, and you'll see this bend in the elbow. Try your best to keep that arm straight. I'm going to go over that a little bit more in a second. <clears throat> Poor appreciation of depth, starting with too deep. This is not a problem when we're trying to put in a, uh, put in a uh, peripheral IV here. Okay? Here's our, let's, let's say this is the vein, all right? Let's say these are both veins. It doesn't really matter, all right? If we're going for this or this, it's not a problem. The depth is about one centimeter, right? And if you're using one of these one inch or three centimeter catheters, that's not going to be a problem, all right? And when you leave here, you're going to find a lot of the time that's the only catheter you have available to you, which presents the problem. You need to try to get one of the two and a half inch catheters because this is what you're dealing with most of the time. Your targets are going to be two, three, four centimeters deep, all right? So that's going to make it highly likely that that IV is going to fail, especially when you put pressure through that catheter. Think about contrast injection with a CT, all right? It'll probably extravasate. Now, if you are using that three centimeter catheter or the patient is morbidly obese, super obese, have a really thick arm, say they have six centimeters to target, what you're going to do is you're going to, tint the skin when you press that IV in. I've seen people do it a lot. I've done it myself. Because you're trying, you're not paying attention. You're looking at the screen. You don't realize that you've got to the hub of the catheter. You keep pushing to get that access. Well, what happens as soon as you let go and relieve that pressure, the skin is going to recoil, all right? And it's going to pull that catheter back out. Or you'll have just a little tip of the catheter stuck in the vein. All right, and as soon as they put any pressure or move, it's out. All right, so make sure you're considering depth. A tip, just preset your ultrasound depth to three centimeters, four centimeters. And that way you're not tempted to go after anything that's too deep. What do you do if you've got a six centimeter depth to target? You can actually use one of the um, femoral arterial line catheter kits, the long ones like a Seldinger technique, place that. So that's an alternative. It's kind of like a poor man's pick. So I've done that a couple times. So that's something that you can, you can try if you really need access, but you don't have a lot of time, or you don't want to put in a central line for whatever reason. Try to avoid going through the muscle. Not always uh, avoidable, right? Sometimes you have to go through the muscle. But the problem is, is when you get your catheter in, when that patient goes like this and that muscle shortens, it's going to tug the catheter with it, all right? So you can do a couple of things here. You can scan up and down the arm to try to find a position where the vein is out from underneath the bicep. Like this would be a great target, assuming these are both veins. This will be an excellent target because we can get to it without going through the muscle. The other thing that you can try is you can actually try to pull and have somebody hold the, the bicep out of the way. That way, the bicep will pull out lateral revealing the target. So you can, you can go, um, get access, and then when they let go, it'll slide back over. Again, it's going to still tug on the catheter a little bit. 
not always avoidable. And I don't think it's a really big problem if you have a lot of excess catheter, okay? But just be cognizant of that. Now, the other possibility is that it's too shallow. And where you're going to run into this is if you're looking for, if you're trying to do ultrasound-guided IVs of the distal forearm or particularly the, the radial artery, okay? Radial artery, this is a radial artery right here. And I've just threw up hypothetical depth here, but it's pretty realistic. I mean, that's about the right depth, about one centimeter, a little less than a centimeter for their big, maybe a centimeter and a half. But the closer you get to the scan surface, the worse that the near-field resolution is, right? You see how grainy it is? So right off the bat, your quality isn't very good. Now, the other issue, I'll, let me explain my diagram here before I keep going. I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page, because if you don't understand what I'm trying to say in this diagram, you're not going to understand anything I'm about to say. So here is our standard view. Here is our scan probe, right? Or here's our probe, ultrasound probe. It's, it's like that. We're looking at it from this view, Okay. By going to this diagram here to the right, now we're looking at it like this. So your vein is running here. So we've, it's like we've, initially I was standing here and I just stepped to the side and now I'm looking this way, okay? So this is your probe indicator that you're looking at. All right, so you understand what I'm trying to say there with that diagram? Okay. So, moving on. Here's your ultrasound image up here. Here's your vein in long axis. Typically, if you're just going for a regular vein, say two centimeters, two and a half centimeters of depth, no problem. You have some distance to travel before the needle gets into your beam where it can, uh, before it appears on the screen, you see? We have to get all the way down here into the signal before we can actually see it. That's not a problem as long as that distance is shorter than the distance to the actual vein. Not a problem at all. But when we're dealing with a really shallow target, this happens, all right? Your distance to your target is shallower than the distance to actually get your needle into view. So by the time it pops into view, you've already traversed it or gone past it. So how are we gonna remedy that? How are we gonna deal with that situation? You need to move your needle tip when you're dealing with a shallow target, think A-line, needle tip as close to the scan surface as humanly possible, maybe even rocking the, the scan surface up a little bit and letting that needle slide under the scan surface to shorten that distance, okay? So now we were able to get our target into view with a shallow depth. And that beats the heck out of the depth that we would have had to go to by starting back here to actually get it into view. Okay, so rock that probe surface up, put the needle as close to the scan surface as you possibly can before you insert through the skin. So just a quick review on that because we covered a whole bunch. Make sure you use long enough cap. Don't tint the skin. Avoid muscle if possible. Again, I want to reiterate, not always possible. <clears throat> Avoid targeting veins that are beyond the proximal forearm. So when I go in to do an ultrasound guided IV, I'm done, I'm sorry, right here and moving up. I'm not down here. Okay, unless I just have a really big arm, I may do a quick sweep to see if I can find anything that is um, a reasonable target. But once they get down here, they become very, they branch a lot. They also get very small. So generally speaking, proximal forearm and up. <clears throat> um, and in a situation where you have an unavoidable superficial target, Insert the needle at the skin face, rock the, rock the probe a little bit to get that needle up under the scan surface before you pierce the skin. And I think that you'll find that you'll improve your success. <clears throat> now, the next one is failure to appreciate your approach. It's got them locked up. <laughs> this is St. Bart's, by the way. If you ever go into St. Bart's, that's the airport you're going to land at. So it's so, uh, listed as one of the most dangerous airports because of that. <coughs> Short one runway and a steep approach. So let's talk a little bit about the actual approach to your target, okay? We talked a little bit about this just a second ago, but generally speaking, making a couple of assumptions, 
You have a 90 degree angle here, 45 degree, 45 degree. These distances are going to be the same. All right, and there's an imaginary, you know, this is the distance that your probe is going to have to travel to get to target. So if you want to hit the vein here, you've got to start back here. A lot of people, especially junior learners, they look at it and they find their target where they're going and they're just like, all right, yeah, I'm going to get it right there. That's a perfect target. I'm going to go for that. So they start right here kind of imagining in their head this is where they're going to end up. But they really end up over here. And that's not a problem if you have a nice, straight, large caliber vein that you're going after. Or if you start it up high in the neck, but a lot of people will start down low in the neck, all right? Because that's where the IJ is going to be most visible, all right? The IJ tends to collapse once you get higher in the neck, almost not visible a lot of the times, particularly in some of our patients, right? Hypovolemic, it's actually non-visible. So if you start down here, by the time you get to target, you're going to be in the chest, all right? Don't start down low on the neck. Now, you may pre-scan down there. That's fine. See what the IJ looks like. But I want you starting doing needle insertion up high because that's going to give you room to approach to your target. The other possibility that you may run into is this right here where we're looking, all right, this looks great. This is what we're going to go for. But as you approach to, to depth to get to your target, the vein splits on you. So here you are, ready to place the catheter. Now you're trying to sweep it one way or the other, and you're going to end up tearing that vein and blowing the vein, and, and it's going to be an unsuccessful attempt. So pre-scan. Scan that, uh, scan that vein. Scan that target up and down to see what it looks like, see if it's twisting, see if it's branching. And if you identify a branch point, come back up. Rather than starting here, start back here. And that way, once you, become, once you get to target, you're at that original spot that you thought looked really good. Now, the, the, the reverse could also happen. You may see a, a, a branch back here, but a nice straight vein, all right? And you may actually start back here at the branch to get to your target where it's straight, okay? So scan up and down, try to find a good access point and start upstream to give yourself room to get to depth. <coughs> Next would be an approach that is too steep. <laughs> yes, except he didn't have a helmet or a shirt. <laughs> All right. So this is a nuance that a lot of people don't consider. First, let's focus on this diagram to the left. If you have a nice parallel, tar parallel needle to your scan surface, you have a great bright reflector. It's reflecting all of that sound back to the ultrasound probe. So you're getting a nice, white, bright reflection. So that needle is very visible. It's easy to see. Usually we're going to be doing something like this. We're going to have an angle to it, right? We're going to have some kind of approach that's going to be steep. Some of that sound is being reflected off into space and not returning to the probe. So what you're getting is less of a signal, though still visible. But when you're trying to go for those really deep targets, you're trying to get to depth, to actually get that needle in, you're reflecting most of that sound off into space and getting a very weak signal that is almost non-visible. In fact, I'll venture to say the needle really disappears. Right? So you have a situation where you're actually having to drop the angle to see where you are and then drop it back steep where it almost becomes invisible, advance a bit more, drop the angle so you can see it, and advance, steepen your angle again, advance. Okay. Continuing on with the two steep approach. So with that in mind, what I just showed you, we want our needle as flat as possible. Now, also one other caveat, when you pierce the skin, go almost vertical. All right. Because it, once you lose your anchor hand, we're holding the probe. Once you lose your anchor hand, you're going to rake that needle across the skin and it actually pinches the skin into ridges and you actually pierce in and out, in and out, in and out of the skin. And it's extremely painful as you might be able to imagine. So Steep, pierce, then drop the needle. Don't go in like this when you don't have an anchor hand, okay? Because your, your anchor hand is holding the ultrasound probe. So <clears throat> one of the ways to minimize your angle of approach is to find a deeper target. So you should be looking for targets that leave some room between the scan surface and the vein. All right? 
rather than having to go in at this angle, you can approach at more of this angle. So you have more sound returning. So the needle is going to be more visible. So spend a second scanning to look for a nice straight target that has some uh, has a little bit of a length to it that has some depth as well. Now with the radial artery, all oh, that's out, right? But a lot of our peripherals, a lot of those patients, you can spend some time and find a good access point. If you just spend an extra minute or two looking, and it'll improve your success and save you a lot of time in the long run. Now the other thing that you can do is rock the probe. We talked about that a little bit. Now the other thing that is out there, there is the uh, needle uh, visualization software, and what they're doing is they're steering the beam. All right, so it goes from this to this. So they're actually pointing the beam more at the angle that you're approaching. So you have so so you have sound that is bouncing back uh, at closer to a 90 degree angle to your reflector, which is our needle in this case. So that does enhance the view as well. Uh, our newer machines are going to have that software. None of our current machines have that. And also, too, for those of you who are wondering, the machines are here. They're on the ninth floor. I know I've told you a couple of that, a couple of you guys that. Um, the, the big holdup has been our QPath workflow, um, which is going to take some time. So we're coming up with an alternative solution. So we're thinking maybe, uh, uh, maybe a month. Uh, but that depends on some of our colleagues upstairs as to how quickly they move. So, um, so we're still working on it. We just had a meeting the other day. Now, the other thing you can do, I talked about straightening the, the elbow, extending the elbow. This is why. Because if you have the elbow bent and you're going, let's say that you're going just below the elbow, Let's say the elbow is right here. Once you advance your needle and try to advance your catheter, it's almost having to take a turn to come back around. All right, so have that patient straighten the arm out, and it's going to improve your ability to offload that catheter. It's not having to take a turn and go back towards the skin. All right, this is when old trusty fails you. <laughs> What's old trusty? Old trusty is the flash. All right? Don't use the flash. Don't use the flash. Don't use the flash. The flash will mislead you. And here's a good example right here. Here we see a nice, this, this, this image correlates. You see a nice, beautiful flash right here? What we have is the needle tip that's in. Well, notice that the needle tip extends beyond the catheter. So the catheter is still outside of the vein. So when you try to advance that catheter, when you see flash, a lot of times you're going to be pushing, you're going to be collapsing that vein in, or you're going to tear that vein. All right. So if you watch a uh, watch a skilled nurse, they just watch them when they when they're doing their doing their peripheral IVs blindly. They get their flash, drop their angle just a little bit, and drive a little bit further. We, when we're doing ultrasound guidance, don't do that. We see flash. Okay, great, go. Now, use the ultrasound, drive the needle down the lumen a little bit further. basically what I just said, drive the needle down the lumen and you're going to get the needle tip and the catheter. Now the other thing that can happen, particularly with ar arterial lines, and um, I think this happens very commonly, um, you get your flash and you try to thread your wire and what happens is that you actually rip the intima off and you actually will dissect the artery. And I've seen this quite a few times. And, some of the thrombosis that we see as a complication of this, I think this is what's going on. All right? So take an extra second. Make sure that you've got the needle tip into the artery before you thread your wire. Now, the other thing that happens is you could be on the back wall. You're going to get a flash when you're sitting on the back wall, but when you try to offload that catheter, you're going to rip through the back. All right, so take an extra second and make sure you're lined up down the lumen. Next would be failure to distinguish your limits. This is a young parkour fella. <laughs> Went a little beyond his limits. Now for us, we need to know, we need to do a better job monitoring the needle tip. All right? Keep a visualization of the needle tip. One of the limitations that we give you, that we bestow upon you, is we use these, these uh, models, these phantoms. Now, look at this, this phantom. It's almost anechoic. The soft tissue is almost anechoic. That needle is shining so bright. You just walked out of your lab, and you're like, I got this. It's going to be a piece of cake. But then you look at the, ar at the arm, and you see how echogenic it is. Lots of tissue planes there. The target is probably a lot deeper than what you, you experienced here. So we kind of 
mislead you a little bit with using these. So we need to do a better job of being able to actually find that needle tip because the needle tip is going to blend in, the needle itself is going to blend in with some of these tissues. So what I want you to try to do as we go forward, and this is where I think the lab is going to come in really handy, <coughs> is to develop an eye for tissue displacement. You're not always going to see that needle tip, but if you, if you find a surrogate, which is tissue displacement, that's going to help you. So this is a, a, a peripheral IV I did a couple years ago, and I think it kind of illustrates that a little bit. So here's our two veins. There's our artery. We see some tissue movement. I slide up. There's the, there's the needle right there. I did a sweep. Now I advance my probe. I'm sw sweeping a little bit, sweeping a little bit, and advance. There it is right there. I see tissue displacement, but notice I don't really see the needle tip very well. And what I'm doing is I'm advancing the probe and just doing a little wiggle to see if I see tissue displacement. And if I don't, I walk the probe back until I see tissue displacement. When I find it, I advance it just a little bit, advance the needle, do another little wiggle. So just moving the tissues, and you see it here, I've walked it all the way down to the tip. I don't see the needle, but I could see the tissue moving right above my target. There was a pop right there, and I'm going to show you what to do next that I think will improve your success. Advance the catheter under real-time guidance. And the way I want you to do that is to use the hybrid technique that I've, I've taught a few of you guys, um, but now I get to teach all of you. So here we are picking up right where we pierce the vein. Pops through right there. I've turned, I'm turning the probe long axis, and I'm sweeping across the skin until I see my needle. There's my needle. I saw it. I go back. There's my vein right. I came off of it. It's a tiny vein, so I'm having to bear some, There's my... My, uh, my target, I advanced the needle just a bit because I saw that the catheter was outside. Crud, sorry. Looks like it's not going to let me drive. All right, so we're going to start over really quickly. Look right as I come back around long axis. You'll see the catheter is still outside the vein. You'll see like a little notch. Look, look, look. Right there, right there. See the catheter still outside the vein? So I flatten the angle and advance the probe just a little bit more right there. Now the catheter has cleared the wall. Now I'm going to offload the catheter. I'm trying to optimize my view. A little bit off axis, I kind of redirect. Now we're going to start to offload. Make sure it's not hanging up on anything because the angle's pretty steep. You see that? I'm noticing it's sliding across the back wall. I feel comfortable we can stop. All right, this is a video that me and Matt made over in the lab, in the, in the cadaver lab. Um, <clears throat> so we're looking for the IJ. Obviously, this is a cadaver, so it's not normal anatomy. Here's the artery. Here is the vein. All right. He's got a couple of little animations in here, so this is kind of beyond your level of training, but feel free to have a look here. All right. So... As we bring the needle into view, notice I'm putting it right at the scan surface at a fairly steep angle. It's kind of demonstrating the actual technique, right? The short axis technique. Steep angle, and then I drop once I pierce the skin. See that? I drop the angle there. I see, I, it's hard to see the needle, but I see a little bit of a reflection here. I see a lot of that tissue displacement we talked about, and I'm positioning that tissue displacement right above the target that we're going for. So I can see tissue displacement right above my target. What I'm going to do now is turn long axis. There's the IJ. See how it's kind of collapsed up high? There's my needle. You see a little bit of tissue displacement. I'm going to go ahead and advance the needle and drop the angle to aim the barrel down the IJ so I can all, uh, put my, my wire in. All right? So I know for sure that I'm not backwalling. I can drive that down into the IJ, and as I'm taking off my syringe, I don't have to worry so much about accidentally displacing the needle. If I place the needle about a centimeter into the IJ, I've got a little bit more room to move, so now I can anchor it, bring in my guide wire, not worry so much about displacing it. If you rely just on the flash, there's a good chance you're just going to have the tip of that needle in. And that's why you may fail when you're trying to pull the syringe off and grab your guide wire. So take a second and drive it down. 
Um, I think this technique is, uh, I use this technique pretty much 100% of the time for my A lines because they're so superficial and for my central lines for the same reason because they're pretty superficial, my IJ central lines because they're pretty superficial. All right, so I can watch that tip. I can see the biz, I don't have a lot of room to work here. So I've got 100% visualization of my needle tip and I can, um, in a very skillful fashion, drive it down the vessel. Here it is with central line. We see some tissue displacement. Oh, there's the needle right there. I'm positioning it over my target, which is down here. Here's uh, SCM. I'm advancing, advancing, I'm walking. This, you guys know this technique. We're just walking the, the needle to the target. Actually pop through right there. But I'm going to turn long axis, and I'm going to drive this down the lumen a little bit. I lifted the angle and advance just a bit. So I've got a solid centimeter of my needle in now. I'm not going to displace it. Coordination fail. Did I get audio? Can that be that? I think this is the, what you really wanted, though. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that I'm cruel. You're thinking that I'm cruel, but that's payback for those of you who uh, didn't see his little video of me on the Wave Runner. It's just payback. Ball's in your court now. All right. I doesn't really have anything to do with anything. I just wanted to show that. <laughs> so in summary, position yourself and the patient for comfort. Properly position the machine, like we talked about. Be cognizant of which arm you're working to put the IV in. <clears throat> Consider the distance the needle needs to travel and account for that before you pierce the skin. Tilt the needle and or the scan surface to optimize your view, to try to have that beam as close to 90 degrees to your needle to improve visualization. Don't rely on the flash of blood. Develop an eye for tissue displacement. This takes time. It's not going to come when you walk out of here. You have to practice that. Utilize that hybrid technique, particularly with A-lines and central lines. It's not making you weak. I think you're being a better, uh, a better ultrasound-guided vascular access physician. If you have difficulty threading the wire, use real-time visualization to thread that catheter and that wire. All right, and you can make sure you're not hanging up on the back wall or your, your catheter is actually outside your vessel before you thread. Any questions?